All righty. All righty. Hello, and welcome back to the Masonic Roundtable, a weekly program where Masons from around the world get together to talk about Masonic news and opinions in a friendly and social manner. The standard disclaimer applies. The thoughts and opinions expressed here are solely the opinions of the participants and do not represent any Grand Lodge statements or positions. Make sure you keep your conversations open for the public and on the level. You know me, John Ruark, past master of the Patriot Lodge, number 1957 in Fairfax, Virginia. And we'll hand it off to Jason Richards. All righty then. <laughs> hey, everybody. Jason Richards here, Worshipful Master of Acacia Lodge number 16 in Clifton, Virginia, and member of the Colonial Lodge number 1821 in the District of Columbia. All righty. Robert Johnson. Hey, Robert Johnson here, uh, past master Waukegan Lodge 78 in Waukegan, Illinois, current secretary and the best TDGM ever. 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 Unfortunately, Hashtag not my district deputy. <laughs> unfortunately, tonight, Juan was trying to dial in from DC, but unfortunately, he couldn't make it. So now introducing the brand new fifth, sixth host of the Masonic Roundtable, Mike the Intern. Fifth, current, sixth total. That's right. <laughs> Hey, Mike Hambrick, uh, Junior Steward and Lodge Education Officer of Village Lodge, number 274 in Burton, Ohio. So there you go. So what's that all about? Well, <laughs> this weekend, the rest of the hosts of the roundtable decided to surprise, I think we, we pulled off a good surprise, by surprising Mike the intern with a well-deserved ex exoneration. I don't know what you want to call it. Uh, to make him the the newest host of the Masonic Roundtable, due to all his hard work he has done behind the scenes, and uh, you know, again, thank you, Ham, for everything you do, and we look forward to having you as a regular uh, host and contributor. Thank you. Awesome. And I'll look forward to it. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. You better, or you're fired. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, you know what's exciting too? Is that for the people who've been listening to this podcast for like the past three months, they're not going to have to hear an introduction to 300 Freemasonry's Legacy, Freemasonry's Future, held this past weekend at the George Washington Masonic National Memorial in Alexandria, Virginia. Guys, we'll cover more, but what did you think? Just give the, the one phrase overview. Jason, what did you think? Incredible. Robert? Stupendous. And Mike the intern. Awesome. I'll go with totally radical. <laughs> uh, very cool. Uh, yeah, so that's that's the topic of tonight's show. We'll give you the details of what went down and how we celebrated 300 years, and we want to hear more about how you celebrated 300 years. But until then, let's go over to uh, Freemasonry for Dummies because... We held an event, not for ourselves, but to celebrate 300 years of Freemasonry. And here out of Hammy's jurisdiction, the Ohio legislature commemorates 300 years of Freemasonry. Tam, take it away. Describe what's going on here. Uh, well, it looks like uh, last Wednesday, the House and the Senate both adopted special resolutions to celebrate the 300th anniversary of the formation of the Premier Grand Lodge. Um, they also uh, met with uh, both uh, officers of the Grand Lodge of Ohio and the Most Worshipful Prince Hall Grand Lodge of Ohio, F and AM. So that's a nice, nice gesture that yeah. uh, we have it in the books in writing here. Let's, there's a couple pictures of the resolution signed by the Congress of Ohio. So that's kind of a big deal going down record books. Normally, I'm not a big fan of these um, kind of celebrating, you know, Twinkie Day and all that. But, you know, it is about masonry, so we'll, I'll allow it. Uh, because there's been more than just Ohio, we have Alberta, Canada. They, their legislature, too, declared June 24th as Masonic Day, which, again, celebrating... Uh, let's see, Arizona's governor also declaring 
Freemasonry Day. They couldn't get their na- titles correct. Just mixing it all up. But yeah, Alberta on June 24th has Masonic Day. So jurisdictions, well, it's not really jurisdictions because it's really not Masonic, but a good gesture nonetheless. It's good to feel included. Now, here's an interesting thought. Do you think, I haven't heard anything about UGLE, and did they have anything in London or England celebrating Masonic Day over there, given their semi-anti-Masonry stance? I haven't heard. Actually, I saw some photos from the day, but uh, I, I can't remember where I saw those now all of a sudden, but they, they did have a big celebration there. Well, that's good. Um, you, know, you know, from from what I understand, that Sky TV cameras spending you know the whole year there and doing that five part series was like really part of their their whole three hundred year celebration. So I'm not sure how much we're gonna see other than just that. I mean, if you go to their homepage today, that's it just says celebrating three hundred years and they're pumping that DVD out. So. I'd, I'd suggest, you know, your, your British friends asking them, hey, did, what did you guys do? You know, sharing some pictures. I did see a few things from, uh, I thought uh, Robert Bone posted something. I, I, I'm not sure. Wasn't there a closed provincial celebration that took place over the weekend? I thought I saw some pictures from it where brethren from several of the different provincial Grand Lodges Uh, got together for a celebration. I know Brother Patrick Craddock from the Craftsman's Apron uh, was uh, doing his own celebration with Brethren over in England uh, as well over the weekend. Should have been a 300. (laughs) In fact, um, I just did a little bit of research and saw that the United Grand Lodge of England does have its own website to centralize the information surrounding their 300 celebrations and you can go check that out at ugle2017.org.uk looks like a place where they've been putting together all of the different events by date and while you're there you can go buy ties and swag as well so check that out ugle2017.org.uk but again they're having their big ball sometime in october um Forward. And their ties are hot. Oh, that's cool. Very good detail on that. Still got to fix the logo, though. Uh, let's see. Um, in <laughs> Very nice. In Masonic News, the last item we have comes from a site called The Past Bastard, where... We have information about a university lodge, or wait, Freemason University, which has been shut down by protesters. Uh, Jason, tell us about this. I can't because I didn't actually read it. Hammy, tell us about (laughs) university. I'm going to put you to work today. Uh, Yeah, so they, uh, there were some protesters about the, uh, uh, I think here was the the dead. Uh, what is it? The dead white males. Uh, let's see. Yeah. First, there was emphasis on those dead white males in Freemasonry. They want to see more modern text with the first authors, but they couldn't seem to uh, come up with any suge- you know direct suggestions for um, who that meant. Or uh, they also asked. Uh, that they stopped serving green beans and potatoes with baked chicken. Um, they wanted uh, classes on things as history of ritual, um, things like that. Uh, spoof of the college protest culture that seems to be going around lately. Interesting. Yep. Hey, well... Uh, let's get into this week's topic, which is the 300 Freemasonry's legacy, Freemasonry's future. Uh, just as a quick overview, in case you haven't heard that, uh, last Saturday was the 300th anniversary of Freemasonry, at least as formed by the premier Grand Lodge of England in 1717 on St. John's day. And so 
we took it upon ourselves to have a little fiesta here in the states across the pond and had a great turnout had a good time so um why don't we let robert give a quick run through by memory of kind of the events friday and saturday just a quick over over a review of what we decided to do sure so basically you know friday we had gotten together and did a a nice quick run through and we kind of set up some tech you know someone anybody who was uh following my instagram feed maybe uh, saw john setting up some speakers with uh, back to the future music playing it was pretty fun um you know then that afternoon we all headed over to the house of the temple we uh, rode the metro over there um man it was a hot and sticky day uh <laughs> but we got over there had an incredible tour uh we held three tours at two o'clock three o'clock and four o'clock uh guys who had already been on the tour before you know hung out in the library um but if you were on that first tour, then we had like three hours to just per, just browse the library. And they honestly weren't even, uh, I didn't think they were going to let us do that. But they just gave us free run of the library and hung out. The tour guides were super cool. Um, so that was amazing. After that, we all headed over to uh, uh, Port City Brewing, which is a, a award-winning brewery. Um, according to some blogs, the best in the country. Um, we had amazing uh good fellowship we had some great beers and some good pizza that ran out lickety split <laughs> uh i had one guy come up and say where was that pizza from it was the best ever and i said it's costco dude <laughs> so uh hey don't knock the costco pizza dude i love costco pizza <laughs> it's like the yeah. acacia lodge special yeah it's it's great so uh you know after that i think most of us went out and uh got most of us anyway i can't speak for everybody but a lot of us went and had a uh, an early night because we had to get up early the next day um <clears throat> we got to the event around eight o'clock in the morning people started filtering in and it was awesome we had jason kick it off with some some good words and uh we brought out juan who kicked off a, a great segment after mike hambrick talked a little bit about the history of the United Grand Lodge of England. So actually, if you get if you're a lodge out there and you want to get a good history of that, uh Hammy does a pretty good 20, 30 minute deal. So check that out. Uh then of course Juan came out and did a thing on uh, Freemasonry's future, which was really inspiring and really kind of put some um memorable images in our heads. And Steve Harrison came out and did his bit on uh uh, we had a little change in the schedule, so he did Freemasonry in Oak Island, and we had some great laughs. Uh, he <clears throat> uh, wowed everybody. Uh, dang, what else? We had a great lunch. After lunch, we had uh, uh, Brother Angel Millar and Angel Miller from uh, uh, the book The Crescent and the Compass. Um, did a great talk on basically anti-masonry and terrorism and how it's kind of like relevant today, uh, which was a great piece. And then John brought it home with some statistics and we did some kind of live data analysis on, uh, on his survey data on membership numbers. We did a breakout session, which was really fun. We answered some questions, kind of went through that, had some good facilitators there, John, myself, Scott Duball, And that was pretty much it. And, we took a two hour break. We ran, we ran elevators to the top of the Masonic Memorial. We got to see the sky deck there. That was really cool. They even had an unscheduled stop at the Templar deck. So people could check that out. Um, <clears throat> this was all like bonus kind of stuff that was added last minute. So everybody really had a good time, I think. And then of course we, we wrapped the whole thing up with a sweet festive board. The food was incredible. Nobody didn't eat which was awesome. And Mark Tabbert was our keynote speaker and he did a wonderful job. And then when we said we needed to clean up, man, thank you to everybody because it was like we said break and the tables were gone. <laughs> like uh, these guys have all been stewards before. So that's cool. <laughs> that was, that was one of the coolest parts of the night actually. Um, <clears throat> I finished up our closing remarks and was like, so if you guys want to stick around, yeah, we're going to be, you know, 
helping uh, helping close up shop and turn around and there's just this big commotion in the banquet halls and like five minutes later like everything's cleared and all those yeah. chairs were stacked yeah i was like that was impressive these guys, these guys have done this a few times <laughs> i i looked over at mark tabbert and i was like so um what else do you need us to do he's like no you're good <laughs> <laughs> right so that was a great great run through um i think yeah everything just kind of fell together uh to that point just to emphasize the the brothers who helped pitch in i mean every brother who was there whether they were working staff whether they were uh just a regular attendee um and even some of the ones who just who kind of just did a drive-by for the day everyone was was great everyone chipped in it was there was just so much brotherly love and and I, i've talked to to you guys you know offline about this and i think really to me the best the best part of the the night really is that no one got introduced by titles <laughs> that that everybody was introduced as brother it was by design it felt very organic and really there there everyone was just there to celebrate together which was just phenomenal, right? It was not about ego. It was about brotherhood. And that was... Yeah. Yeah, no grand honors. <laughs> yeah, no gold chains to be worn. <laughs> yeah, it was awesome. I think uh, <clears throat> I may have even been pushing the envelope because the only um, the only like name badge i brought had you know my ddgm thing on there and i was like trying to find my other one that just said robert johnson waukegan lodge because i didn't want to wear it but i think i was <laughs> probably one of the only guys who even had any kind of like you know we really just try to keep it on the level the whole time and it was absolutely fantastic i didn't see any you know a lot of times you have events and i'm sure guys out there have witnessed ego trips there was like none of that um it was yeah uh, just one of the most inspiring, amazing events. And, you know, it did have a downside, uh, I got to say, you know, and that is, of course, the sugar dump. I mean, <laughs> we came home back to, and we had to go to work today, you know, yesterday. If you, were, uh, if you were me, I was back at work, you know, at 8.30 in the morning yesterday. And, uh, you know, you got to turn off masonry and get back to work, you know? Uh, so it kind of sucked. That That's was hard. Yeah. No, exactly. There's that Masonic high you get right when you hang out and you know, it was a long day and a half. It really was, but we got through it. I think everyone had a good time and everyone really stuck through it to the, to the, to the very end. So that was awesome. Yeah. And, and think about, um, you know, of course, we were super tired and 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 just tapped out right by the end of uh, by the end of the uh, festivities. Um, but I can't imagine how ragged any of us would be if it wasn't for uh, the brothers who came by and helped. Specifically, you know, I got we got to really hand it to uh, those brothers who um, we gave staff badges to, who like were like sandwiches are here. Those guys were up and out and like laying it out. Like, <laughs> you know, uh, it was just amazing. I, I joked with Scott on the plane on the way home and I said, um, now we have to go back to our respective districts where comparatively everything sucks. <laughs> 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 you know, nothing against anybody, but it was just like, you know, when you have such a huge event like that, I'm sure, you know, it's like when you go to Grand Lodge sessions and you, have a huge awesome experience and then you know maybe you gotta go back and listen to the minutes now here's what i'm, I'm going to do here before we go around uh, i want you guys to think about some of like your two or three like big highlights uh, that you want to talk about so while you're thinking about those i want to remind everyone that something we mentioned uh two weeks ago that if you go to this url which is bit.ly bit.ly slash capital T, capital M, capital R 300. That's bit.ly slash TMR 300. You will go to 
um, a Google Photos site where everyone, not just people who attended the 300 event, can share their photos of where you were and what you were doing to celebrate 300 years of Freemasonry. So it doesn't have to be you know, specifically on June 24th, but if you had a lodge event and you wanted to share photos of it, we, you could see some here from Nicholas Lane <clears throat> from Canada, uh, but there are quite a few uh, ones that have been uploaded from, oh, there's some pictures from Brother Juan and many others that were at the, the event, but this is not specifically about our event. We wanted to make sure that you go and have one place to share all your photos of what you were doing to celebrate 300 years of Freemasonry. So go check that out. And while uh, the other hosts share their opinions and, and good memories of the, our event, I'll try to see if I can find some corresponding photos that you've shared. So stay tuned for your pictures. And I will start with the newest host of the Masonic Roundtable, Mike the Intern. Give me a couple highlights that you really enjoyed out of the event. Well, for me, the one of the biggest highlights was actually when I was being introduced and you guys announced that I was actually going to be the uh, newest host of the Masonic Roundtable. I mean, that couldn't have been timed any better. Trust me. <laughs> Um, but beyond that, um, meeting, getting a chance to meet, uh, Stephen L. Harrison was awesome. Um, uh, I've been listening to his Masonic Minute on WCY for so long and then, uh, actually reading a couple of his books. It was just a great honor to meet him. And then, um, near the end of the day when, uh, I met, uh, Kirk McNulty and got his autograph, uh, that was that was spot on. I mean, that was, it was great. Um, but now to, you know, some of the other things, uh, some of the brothers who, you know, walked up to me and, you know, uh, congratulated me on either being, you know, uh, a new host or coming up and telling me what they thought of my presentation. Um, even though, as I'll say it now too, and admit it, I forgot my slideshow. <laughs> but yeah. It, slides. <laughs> But in any case, yeah, it was just nice to hear, you know, um, how people thought of that uh, and then actually ending up in conversations with them or even the bigger one, uh, which is a, a real surprise for me at this point yet is having people walk up and go, hey, Mike, the intern and then start, you know, shaking hands and telling me how they've been watching me on the show and then where they're from and then gone. And I'm like, but who are you? <laughs> Uh, a new celebrity. <laughs> new money. <So>. Yeah. <laughs> but it was odd that way, you know, to just have that moment where, you know, they would just come up and do that and then walk away. Now, one uh, thing I want to highlight um, as we go to Jason next is that we, I didn't ask for specifically your address, you know, when, when you registered. And so I didn't have the information at the ready uh, to see where people were coming from. The good news is I didn't recognize many of the names, which meant it wasn't the uh, the, the typical guys that Jason and I see in, in the D.C. area, which was a good thing because I got to meet brothers from around the world. I mean, we had brothers from Quebec. We had brothers from Tampa, we had brothers from Oklahoma, um, Idaho, California. Chicago, all, all over. And so it was, it was great to see uh, and celebrate with all of you the, uh, the good times that, that really just the, the fellowship and the brotherly love was amazing. So Jason, name a couple of your highlights over the past weekend. All right. Well, um, first and foremost, the fellowship with all the brethren I'd never met before. And brethren I hadn't seen in a long time was by far the best. One of the coolest things about this entire event was, you know, we were we were all there and just hanging out and having a great time. There was no ego. Uh, there was no, oh, he's a 32nd. Oh, he is. He's a 33rd. Oh, you know, he's a Grand Lodge officer, uh, mostly because we didn't really have any Grand Lodge officers, except for one. Thanks, Morgan. Um, <laughs> you know. It was just a, a great event, and everybody checked the egos at the door. And that was absolutely incredible and made for a wonderful time of fellowship. 
Um, yeah, we had we had some some great authors who shared their wisdom with us. Uh, as was mentioned earlier, brother Kirk McNulty, who just uh, republished his book, The Way of the Craftsman, uh, he was there uh, in the afternoon uh, signing copies of his new book. And then, honestly, one of my favorite presentations the entire day was that of Angel Millar, who did um, terrorism and anti-masonry. Uh, he's very, very well researched on not only uh, Islamic fundamentalist terrorism, but also uh, right-wing extremism and, and alt-right extremism. And he weaved a, a very interesting story of anti-masonry and uh, terrorism-related violence. And uh, over the course of you know the past couple decades. So it was a really, really interesting presentation. Again, presentation, it was my favorite, um, to be honest. And I just learned so, so much from it. Um, we're actually going to, um, try to try to get him on the show at some point, but, uh, we're, we're still working that out, but he was just one of the most gracious people I've ever met. He was just so genuinely excited to be a part of it, uh, that, you know, it's just, emblematical of the fact that everybody was just excited to be there, which, which made the event just absolutely incredible. Yeah. I'm great. Glad you highlighted the, um, Kirk McDalty signings of books. Uh, really we had, we hadn't even talked about the vendors room that we had as well. An entire room laid out, you know, wall to wall full of different vendors. And it was great because we had a variety to include, Masonic Revival, you may have heard of them before. Um, it was great to see Edgar come up from Atlanta and hawk his wares and got to see some some new stuff he's working on. And I think he had a great time meeting all the brothers. And he hung out with us even at the House of the Temple on Friday uh, and uh, pizza and beer on, on Friday night. Also, we had Charles Berger from Two Pillars Tattoo down in Richmond, Virginia. He drove up to actually give some masonic ink that's right he tattooed no less than four six in total wow six brothers got uh, some masonic tattoos on the 300th anniversary of freemasonry which is kind of cool um jason and i know one very well and and I, I reminded him today i said hey you know you you know for, for your first tattoo it was very memorable because it's not only a square compass but you will never forget where you were when you got that and when you were when you got it because it was you know on the the anniversary of the premier grand lodge of england so that's that's super cool um i i got clearance from the boss that i could get one but uh you know we were too busy running around and i i couldn't sit still that long <laughs> at least at least <laughs> um so interestingly enough the the first gentleman brother carl who uh who got his tattoo from charles um, actually put a little bit of an homage to the 300 event in his tattoo. I missed that. Interesting. Yeah, he, he got a really cool past master design done, uh, modeled after the past master emblem on his apron. And he put his, uh, his lodge number in the bottom right corner and 300 in the bottom left corner and he he'd like walk up to walked up to me after like angel millar's presentation it was like hey look at this so he's obviously very excited and uh he he will remember that 300 event uh whether he wants to or not uh for very much the rest of his life <laughs> uh let's see some other highlights i had were uh, the heat and humidity was alluded to on friday holy smokes here in dc the dc pavement just captured in that heat and we had a five five block walk or so to get from the U Street Metro to the House of the Temple. And for those brothers who wore long pants, you know, I salute you because you guys were troopers, uh, made it the whole way, sweat dripping down your face, you know, the shirt drenched. But I think, you know, once we got to the air conditioned library at the House of the Temple, it was all worth it because, uh, again, as Robert said, we had plenty of time and a lot of free reign at the house of the temple as well. And so to that last I was there for all of 10 minutes, that's, that's about as much Jason as we can handle at the house. <laughs> and, you know, it goes without saying too, that 
the staff of both the George Washington Masonic uh, National Memorial as well as the House of the Temple downtown. Both were fantastic, very accommodating, and uh, really made the whole event memorable. So have to give kudos to them. Robert, what are some highlights that I missed? So, I mean, when you were talking about the heat, I wanted you were talking about the long pants. I had long pants on and I was going to yell, milk was a bad choice, uh, Anchorman. Mm-hmm. Anyway, uh, yeah. So just a few things that were incredible for me was the fact that um, I have been trying to um, get to see and be in the same room with Steve Harrison any chance I get. Um, and I've never had the... Uh, the honor of introducing him anywhere. Uh, so for me, that was like a proud moment. Um, I kind of felt like, you know, I got to read a short poem that, that means a lot to me and then introduce, you know, Steve Harrison. So, you know, like if you're, <clears throat> you know, some punk rock band that's got to open up or some rock band that's got to open up for your legend, right? Um, that's That was what it was like. Um, it was really awesome for me. Uh, Steve's a cool guy and yeah it was awesome um something else that kind of stuck out at dinner was um i always whenever i go and i am gonna see like a speaker or whatever and it's over dinner you know there are always these circular tables and they're always like eight to a table or whatever this was great because it was only six i was like this is great and I actually picked out my seat before I got in line for any kind of dinner, right? Because I'm like, I'm going to sit and I'm going to watch the guy. So I don't have to be like rubbernecking the whole time, you know? And uh, I, I sat at the same table. Mark Tabard, who was a keynote speaker, sat at our table. And uh, we got on a conversation about um, some topics that we did not cover in the um, the breakout session. Um, specifically, a brother had asked if we would talk about transgender or transsexualism in in the lodge and uh we had decided not to broach that because it would have like i think it's such a big topic and there's a lot to discuss you know it it would have taken away from the session but somebody asked mark We're happy to it. do a show on it though <clears throat> well you know Go so ahead. mark mark basically said you know here's the answer to that uh is that person a good person and do they have good character the end and so it was really cool to hear that from uh somebody as astute as mark um which was really cool uh it was just nice and then uh at the end of the event uh after jason's closing remarks you know i stood up there and and through the whole day you know i'm looking out at the audience in the auditorium and we're kind of spread out right that auditorium is huge and when I saw everybody in the dining hall, it like became real. Like it just blew me away how many brothers came from all over the world. Um, it was like just a sea of suits. And uh, it was just amazing. Like, yeah, uh, if, you, if you're if you watching live, check that photo. But it was, it was just wild to see. It, it really almost, not to take my breath away, but like, I think I could have gotten emotional about it if I had thought about it too much, for sure. It was incredible. Um, I met some great brothers, Brother Paul, who was out there from uh, Las Vegas. He was amazing. Um, <clears throat> having beer with uh, with a couple brothers at the uh, uh, at uh, Port City, like I sat down next to Tom Ryan and we were chit chatting, and we talked about, you know, how I could probably like. I asked him genuinely, how do I not be so abrasive sometimes? And he like talked to me about how not to be abrasive (laughs) in a way that I could take away from it. I mean, just the gleaning of information and really what we talked about the whole entire time, you know, leading up to this event was the ability for us to utilize the time in between sessions and whatnot to really um, have fellowship and bounce ideas off of each other. Um, brother Zach Plunkett, who's from, uh, my, uh, area in Freemasonry under my jurisdiction at Grand Lodge. He's the upper right there. He got that tattoo. It's his first tattoo ever. He got it at Masonic Con and, uh, really cool. So he didn't get it at Masonic Con. I'm sorry. Not Masonic Con. I said Masonic Con at 300. <laughs> um, 
So the upper left is my mentor and first line signer, brother David Hill. Up, upper upper right, sorry, my screen's flipped. I guess. No, um, upper right um, is is Zach. Upper yep. left is David Hill. Yeah, upper right, Zach Plunkett, and yeah, it was awesome. Mm -hmm. So that that's it. Just all of the good fellowship, really, and sweet event. Mm -hmm. Let's see the uh, the next thing I wanted to cover too. Hey, um, Robert, elaborate a little bit more on what that breakout session was like because that was a gamble that we took. Is to, you know, we wanted to make sure that this was just like the roundtable. It's a discussion, not not a one way projection of death by PowerPoint, right? That we while we had that, we deliberately des designed in some very long breaks. That was uh, a lesson learned from Masonicon, and I know there was some feedback that uh, the brothers who went to Masonicon up in Attleboro, Massachusetts, had was that there was so much to do and not enough time to do it. Um, so we we added in some longer, like half hour, forty five minute long breaks, uh, just so that way there was time to collaborate, time to shop through the vendors, and the time to get back to the um, to the presentations. But we also took a took a risk and decided to try this uh, breakout session where we let the audience talk, and we had great facilitation by yourself, Robert, and Scott Duball. And so, um, tell us how that operated, and what did the audience glean from that? Yeah, it was uh, definitely a gamble, but what we did essentially was uh, we went from the auditorium and we went into. Um, the North Lodge room. Uh, we had brothers on both sides and filled all the seats in there. Then other brothers, there was a good row or two up on the balcony uh, or the gallery as we call it. And uh, <clears throat> you were getting owned by uh, guys who had questions about your data. So we had to kind of get things moving. And so Scott and I went up and down the, the rows there and we asked, you know, shout out some topics that, that you want answers to. Shout out some topics of things that um, are everyday annoyances or things that you need that we could fix or um, just how can we help each other? What do you need help with in your lodge, right? And then we compiled all of our responses. Uh, Scott and I were just writing everything down on our phones. Um, we called time. We went back to the back of the room. By this time, John's back there. We're kind of going through the topics. We're discussing like, hey, which, you know, this time's a factor. Which one are we going to cover first? So we picked out a few really good topics um, one of the first ones that we talked about was, oh, we hit, we hit, uh, um, quality time versus quantity time, which was a, which a, a good one that was brought forth, uh, by brother Taylor. Uh, we had, and, and so many really cool responses too. um, somebody was talking about, uh, fundraising, uh, but we really didn't want to, to tackle fundraising. Right. So we, uh, Scott put a different angle on it. Um, we were able to talk about the catechism process or what we call proficiency. What, what defines proficiency? Um, we just went back and forth really. And people were just shouting out things. We took three or four responses from around the room after each question and people got to talk and it was great because they weren't talking to us. They like stood up and faced the guy who had the question. We would ask, like, all right, who asked this? The guy would stand up, hey, tell us a little bit about that. And uh, they would state their question again, more specific. And then we took some responses. We would just call on dudes and they stood up and they were addressing this, you know, the guy who had the question. And there were so many people who wanted to talk that just didn't get a chance to. So the best part was like, after we cleared out of there, dudes were hanging back. Cause that was the last thing of the day. There was like two hour break. So these guys were hanging out and they had, they had two hours to uh, basically, you know, continue the conversations. Um, I thought it was a great gamble and, and we really made it work um, together as a whole, everybody in that lodge room. Yeah. Yeah. I think the big takeaway there is that um, it was about fellowship together and, and and because of the diversity of jurisdictions that were represented, both mainstream and Prince Hall, across the the North American continent, yeah, uh, Jason has a picture of that there, the the breakout session, which had brothers on both sides. It's not like the 
north versus the south or anything but it was it was interesting to see the um the brethren discuss you know topics of how to improve their lodges how to how to bring change back back at home and uh just a fantastic collaboration amongst everyone there uh, mike i'm gonna point to you before we get over to social media about uh any final thoughts you had regarding the event itself or anything that uh, you found especially memorable um i think now uh let's see um you know just honestly back to you know um the brotherhood and fellowship i mean i can't tell you um how special it really was to just you know, wander around and meet guys that I have never met and have them treat me just as if we were uh, from the same town growing up together, you know, and I mean, and have great conversations about anything from, uh, you know, uh, the event itself to, um, I mean, some guys, we talked about their families, you know, and things like that even, you know, and I mean, there were guys who just wanted to share their experiences in masonry. It was absolutely awesome. I couldn't, you know, I couldn't ask for better than that. There it is. Yeah. Right out of the intern's mouth. <laughs> Let's head over to social media now, Jason, and see who's blowing that up on. Man, YouTube has been busy today. because. Uh... <clears throat> yes, it has. There have been very interesting side discussions not relating to the episode whatsoever. <laughs> yeah, I always love those. Um from our good friends over at Masonic Memes. When 300 years old you reach, dad joke memes will you make? I feel like that's that's totally directed at John. <laughs> Why? Because it's a, a green... Uh, no, because you make a lot of dad jokes. I, I do, I do. So, hey, someone's got to catch up for Nick. <clears throat> so, uh, Brother Donnie Dillon, who was one of our esteemed helpers, and staff members over over the weekend uh, posted a really cool picture of one of the items of swag that most of the brethren got who uh, who went, um, and that was our uh, limited edition 300 firing glass. Uh, so what we did was we tried to get a bag of swag together for everybody who uh, who came. And it not only included one of one of these firing glasses, but it also included a limited edition pin, which we will also have for sale on the website at oh. some point. So, and then also one of the uh, one of the bags specifically to to put your own vendor swag into. So we we decided that uh, yeah, Mike's got uh, Mike's got the pin there. We decided that. You know, we we wanted to shower you all with with not only you know Masonic knowledge, but uh, and fellowship, but also uh, gifts as well as as a thank you for coming out and spending time with us. So we really wanted to to make it worth your while. So we we thought giving everybody some some gifts as they came in the door uh, would be a great thing to do. Also, we didn't discuss the patent, which is going to be absolutely incredible memento that anyone can get so what we did was we had um brother ryan flynn who uh, of course a esteemed and very well-known masonic artist um did a patent for us and it was uh absolutely incredible just this this beautiful medieval patent with um like 24 karat gold paint on it and it uh, essentially, there we go, it uh, commemorated the event and the brethren who are here. And so the brethren who registered and checked in were asked to sign the patent. And what Robert's going to be doing is he's going to be getting it professionally scanned this week. And we're going to make it available uh, for order and, and purchase. So anyone who wants a, a professionally scanned copy or print of the patent with their signature enclosed is going to have an opportunity to, to order it and take home just another uh, historic memento. You know, this there is never going to be another patent like this made. It was made specifically for us for this event by our good friend and brother Ryan Flynn. And he does absolutely incredible artwork. 
and there is a lot of uh, artwork in that patent that is a direct homage to the Masonic Round Table, most notably the fact that the entire background of the patent is emblazoned with the Flower of Life uh, as an allusion to our Sacred Geometry episode. So there, there are little hidden nuggets everywhere in that patent, um, just as as a further allusion to to the show and the episodes we've done. So once we get the information on how you can order it, and once we see what it looks like as far as the professional scans are concerned, uh, then we'll make those available. We'll also make the the leftover pins available for purchase. We only ordered three hundred of those, so when they're gone, they're gone. So I think I think we've we've got a handful of them left. So we'll put them on the website and we'll let you know. But if you weren't able to attend, uh, they turned out really, really well. So I guess I'll go back to social media now that I've uh, <laughs> finished uh, plugging all of our awesome wares. So Brother Scott Newbury uh, says, it's always a good thing when egos and titles are checked at the door. And I, I couldn't agree more with him on that. Uh, that was really what made the event, to me at least, uh, as special as it was, um, because uh, just everybody was there to enjoy fellowship and have a good time, and that that really was the the best part of the event for me. John, as far as Facebook is concerned, that's about it. Wait, I think there's there's one more picture from there's one more picture from Donnie yeah. Dillon, of course. Um, it's a specific <laughs> okay. congratulatory message to Mike the intern uh, because he will make TMR great again. <laughs> Congratulations! Um, that's good. And I, will, and I will of course say, wait, when was it great before? <laughs> oh. <laughs> I was I was busting Donnie's chops a little bit uh, out in DC. I said, you know, you're the you're the heart and soul of the meme verse, man. So we really need you. You know, you got to get on that. So <laughs> thanks, dude. Funny stuff. Awesome. Well, we've reached that time. Let's go around one last time for final thoughts before we get to Mike the intern last. And uh, let's start with Robert. What are your final thoughts on this episode? Um, it was great to kind of just take a little memory trip there for a minute and, uh, think about um, the amazing, uh, thing that, uh, happened over the weekend. Um, I dare I say, you know, the, the weekend that we had, um, like it's almost, it feels like, because we know, you know, 300, 296, you know, whatever, um, it felt just more like a celebration of a gathering of brothers than 300. Like that was a good founding foundation stone, I guess. But the building that we built while we were there together was, was what it was all about and what I keep thinking about and what is going to drive me, uh, you know, a whole year probably um, until we do this again. And I just got to say thanks to everybody who came out and to even the guys who couldn't come out and the, the messages of support and when we were sharing stuff, telling us, you know, this is great. Sorry, I missed it. Um, it was awesome. And I can't wait till we do it again. It's going to be, you know, bigger than this one. So that's it. Awesome. Thanks, Robert. Jason, final thoughts? Yeah, this, um, <clears throat> this weekend was absolutely incredible. It was a high point for me in my entire Masonic career, to be honest. Just meeting that many amazing folks from all over North America. Um, you know, Juan, Juan and I uh, made a challenge to each other <clears throat> where we challenged each other to learn as many names as we could. And that was, uh, that, that made the event all that much more fun where I could walk down the hall and just say, hey, Mark, hey, Brett, and, uh, you know, feel like at least on on some deeper level, I, I directly connected with those brethren uh, just because we, we took the time to, to learn each other's names. And there's there's something to be said for, for that connection 
and the ability to to readily form those bonds um, over such a short period of time just because of the shared experience with ex shared experiences excuse me we have as as men and masons so it was an incredible event it uh, blew me away and surpassed any of my deepest expectations so it's something we're definitely going to have to do again because if nothing else I, I want to see each and every one of those brothers again. Very well put. Mike, the intern, final thought. Well, yes, I, I wanted to reiterate uh, what they said, what Jason said about thanks to everyone. Um, really honestly. Uh, I also would like to uh, thank Mangiano's man. Their food was awesome uh, for dinner. Uh, it was absolutely great. They, you know, the way they even came in and just set it all up for us. I mean, they, they were just, I mean, incredible. Um, but then back to the brothers that, you know, I mean, some guys brought us uh, some really cool swag. I really have to thank for that. Um, and I agree with Jason and Juan about wanting to learn people's names. The sad part is that I really uh, have a, had a tough time doing that. Uh, <laughs> Especially because people would just walk up and go, Mike the intern, shake my hand and disappear, you know. <laughs> but uh, it was it was the most incredible thing, honestly. I mean, yeah, I've only been in masonry a year, but uh, most incredible thing that's ever happened to me. So, very cool. All right, well, congrats again, Mike. Thank you for joining us full time, and uh, for all your help that you did in putting us together this great event. Uh, so to wrap things up, you know, we we had we had a good turnout, but I'm sure most of you listening probably didn't go. And the, it, it, there's nothing more boring than hearing about a concert you didn't go to. <laughs> remember that one time? No, I don't remember that one time because I wasn't there. But it, really, the point of this too was to reflect upon celebrating 300 years of Freemasonry, to you know, to celebrate uh, the fellowship that we had. And then finally, as, as we've alluded to multiple times in the show, is that um, this was just, you know, really the five of us and, and then the additional support staff to get this thing going. This was not done at the Grand Lodge level. This was something that you can do to just put on an event that you would want to go to. And I've told people, uh, you know, personally, this is, this is the, my litmus test was, is this the event that I would want to go to? And the fact that there were no titles, that everyone was on the level, that um, you we could do things that were very unorthodox by um, you know going to a brewery and just just hanging out and just you know, knocking back beer and pizzas as well as just you know hours before walking through the house of the temple I mean just just the whole event was um, something that could be emulated by anyone and we encourage you to do so so um, get a reason to celebrate get your brothers together and and try to find creative ways to be in fellowship with each other so with that thank you very much for watching and keep searching for more light have a good night